So the Ethical SRI Fund is a fund with a 19 year history uh, here at Perpetual. It's one of the first funds that was launched in the ethical SRI space in Australia. It's an extension of our core um, investment process here at Perpetual uh, with some additional screening and overlays on top of that. So our screening process for the fund uh, is an extension of our perpetual screening process. So there's four quality filters that we must look at for each company to be assessed uh, for inclusion in our fund. So they are a quality of business, good balance sheet, good management team and recurring earnings. Beyond that, there's two additional screens for, for my fund. They are based on the activities of a business and we apply a 5% revenue materiality threshold for, for things like alcohol, manufacturing distribution, fossil fuel production, gaming uh, and tobacco. Beyond that, there's a second screen where we're looking for positive performance across a range of E, S and G issues. Uh, companies that score positively on these matters will be assessed for inclusion into our fund. Um, it's important to remember that we're not looking to penalise companies, we're looking for a net positive aggregate score. The screens remove a large percentage of market capitalisation in the ASX 300, but not necessarily a large number of stocks. So I believe there's more than enough opportunities uh, for this particular product. The fund can also invest up to 20% of its holdings in an offshore security, um, which enables me to, to look into far broader and deeper markets, and, and therefore there's plenty of opportunities for this product. I also think the long-term returns attest to the fact that the screens aren't too restrictive for this fund. Some of the opportunities in the market at the moment, I think are most interesting in financials, uh, whether that be banks or in particular general insurers. IAG is a stock that we really like at the moment. Anything that could go wrong did go wrong for the company in, in 2020, whether it was natural peril uh, claims, whether it was interest rates coming down, affecting their investment income on technical reserves and shareholder equity. But we think there's a great opportunity to buy the company at bottom of the cycle earnings at the moment. The core consumer franchises are very strong. Uh, there's an opportunity to reprice the commercial insurance book and, and drive returns and we think that's a stock that's trading at a really compelling valuation. In terms of adapting and, and responding to COVID, I think it was more just a reiteration of some key investment tenants rather than looking to do anything differently. I think it was really a, re a reiteration rather of how hard it is to time investment markets and therefore that it's better to stay relatively fully invested in good quality companies. It also highlighted to me the importance of backing good management teams. Good management teams acted decisively during the COVID uh, pandemic, whereas some others didn't. Um, and lastly, just reiterating the strength of balance sheet. Balance sheet is a, a strong part of our investment process and for many years it didn't seemingly matter. And then in 2020, in the blink of an eye, it, it mattered a whole lot. The companies that avoided doing dilutive equity raises at the bottom of the cycle have preserved equity for their shareholders. In terms of another favourite stock, and look, I would caveat this with saying that everything is related to price and valuation. So I, would say, I wouldn't say it's a never sell, but, but certainly a stock that I particularly love is, is Nick Scarly. And, and why I love that is the business model itself. It, it carries minimal inventory, which takes away a lot of downside risk um, if, if cycle turns against them. But it's also a very cash generative model uh, with great returns on capital. And I still think there's a long runway ahead for the company, whether it's rolling out new stores, improving their online offering and, and taking market share or selective M&A. I think that's a business with a great runway ahead of it and, and probably never gets the multiple that it deserves for the quality of the company. The Ethical SRI Fund is benchmarked to the ASX 300 and the performance over the last 12 months has been quite strong, which is very pleasing. But investing, I like to say, is a, a marathon, not a sprint. It's, it's only early days in my tenure. I've been running the fund for a little over for two years now. Having said that though, I believe that the portfolio is really well placed moving forward. So whilst we've enjoyed some great returns of late, I think there's a lot of value appeal in the fund and I, I expect it to provide good returns to unit holders uh, for the foreseeable future.